Hello everyone. So I think most of us have seen uh, job descriptions stating that we need someone who can write standard operating procedures for us, who should have a sound, uh, good manufacturing practice knowledge. So with reference to same, um, I'm doing this video in which I'll be going going over the structure contained of standard operating procedure and how it's important and where it's used. Before going to that, I would like to go over uh, what are the different type of uh, documents we use in industry and all of them are coming under the good documentation practice requirements I discussed in my previous videos. So uh, as you see on the screen, with the documents, this is based upon my knowledge. There may be few more, but I think if you get to know about these, these are the basics one. So in, in any life science industry, we have document types such as standard operating procedure, which guide us on performing any single operation in an industry. Even if a company has a calculator, manual calculator, there has to be a standard operating procedure for the same. So you need not to have any type of knowledge requirement in order to perform a job. You just go there and there will be a set of instructions written by the company and approved by the quality department. So you just pick that up and perform the operation. Batch record, some company called it batch process record, some called um, batch master record, some called batch manufacturing record. Um, it's basically used on manufacturing shop floor, also used in uh, formulation scientist or formulation labs. Others are specifications used in quality control, research lab. Um, specification can be used by validation in other departments. Test data sheet, it's just a set of uh, instructions and column and spaces where you need to record uh, results after performing a test. And this is this document is specifically used by quality control department. Logbook, all department use logbooks, printouts, um, every department use printout, thermal graphs, specifically used in warehouse, manufacturing where there is a temperature requirements like a product has to be stored for this much degree for these many days or these many limits like 25 degrees centigrade, not more than that. So wherever we need a thermal recording, thermal graphs will be available. Issuance slips, form, forms and request. These are very simple documents used in any pharmaceutical company. Product issuance, document issuance, all done through an issuance slip. Form, you are requesting a new document. You are requesting a retrieval of old executed document. You are requesting a product failure report from quality assurance. Any other type of, even an auditor is requesting something, it has to go through some type of form and undergo approval process so that the required authorities know that who requested whom and what is the purpose behind requesting the document. Certificates and labels. Labels, labels are just the indicator of what a equipment, utility, facility, product is a stand for. If you are entering in a plant in any company, it should have a label name on it that this is a sterile manufacturing facility. This is something else or you are entering in a warehouse, you should say it's a warehouse for finished raw material, um, finished product, ponded storage room. Certificates are generally issued for performance of equipment. So certificates are for uh, cleanliness, preventive maintenance of utilities, facility, uh, certificates for training for human beings or people who are working in a company. Certificates of compliance, like quality control department, they will write in certificate that Whatever product you have manufactured, we have checked as per our standard specification following standard procedures and we found that all the results are falling within the specification limit. Thus, we believe that all the test results are within the specification and this product is safe enough to release to the product market. Protocols and report for performing new study, for performing routine study, for performing requalification. A new equipment is coming to your facility. You are testing your existing facility. A failure happened. All through go undergo through a set of instructions written in protocol and then you will write a report for the same. I will go over all the documents individually in different 
sessions. For this session, I will go over standard operating procedure. So I would like to show you how a standard operating procedure look like in any company. So this is a standard format. Companies have their own formats, but this is the minimum requirement. So all students, all job seeker, all college dropouts who want to enter in life science industry, if they want to gain an experience on how when a standard operating procedure looks like in any pharmaceutical, life science, medical device, biologics company, it should look like something similar to this. Uh, the place of uh, locations, name can be on a different uh, places in any other company. So if you see, this says format of standard operating procedure. So it's coming from a company called Source Consulting. They have created for their own um, clients. I've, I've taken a copy from them. So it says standard operating procedure. Now standard operating procedure consists of, please like let's say, um, just ignore this annexer for now and format. So your standard operating procedure in any company will look like this. Your company logo will appear here. The each SOP will have respective SOP number so that it can be traceable. And who issue this um, SOP number? Quality documentation department issue the SOP number. So for example, this SOP belong to quality assurance and the number is one. Let's say you work for QC. So the QC SOP can be QC-001. And if QC have 100 SOPs, they will have 100 sequence numbers. Warehouse, WH, um, Regulatory Affairs, RA001, uh, Manufacturing, MFG001. Each company have their own specific format on how they want to write uh, SOP number. Then it must contain your company logo right here. It should say standard operating procedure because this indicate what is this document. This document is some sort of instruction um, SOP. Now come down below it says location, organization, name, name and department. So let's say my location is um, um, Wuburn. Then organization name is CPS. Then department is QA. So similar to this, then SOP, uh, then the logo come here, title, SOP number also comes here, implementation date, when it was implemented, review frequency. Each company have their respective review frequency. Some company want to review their SOPs more frequently. When I say review, it means like for example, your facility is subjected to various changes and you bring a new equipment in your facility. Now, if you didn't get a chance to revise an SOP, you won't be able to update your SOP content um, or won't be able to see that what, how many changes happened since last two years and are we on track on updating our SOPs. That's why we put a um, review frequencies. Some company have less SOPs, so they put the review frequency lesser. Or some companies have a very robust quality assurance program where they ensure that whenever a changes happen, their quality assurance department make sure that all the impacted documents are covered. They, they rely for a longer review frequency. It's up to all the quality assurance practices followed within the company and the quality culture they are having. I have seen some companies they put two to three years because it's a good amount of time where you can uh, get a chance to see uh, what has been changed. Super said, all it means if this SOP was made superseding some other SOPs. Let's say there was an SOP called uh, QA000 or QA001 and now this SOP number is QA002. So the SOP you superseded was 00001. Okay. Now let's come to um, title. So for example, I've included here um, digital wall clock. 
every company has a digital wall clock so let's say the title of the sop is operation of digital wall clock as simple as this now if you come down and you will see series of sections within an sop so you as a qa person or as a departmental person who's responsible to write they have the responsibility to include every single detail mentioned in this uh, format so for example purpose so you have to in order to write an sop effectively um, i will go over secondary uh, like in other videos uh, how to write an sop but for now let's discuss about the sections in an sop so we have sections like purpose scope responsibility definition procedure abbreviation reference annexures and at the below it has sections for who prepared who reviewed and who approved then if you come down below you will see page numbers format number and then um in the last page somewhere it comes the change history change history means who revised this and what was the reason behind revision so let's say qa-002 is the sop number plus the revision number was 01 and we revised this implementation date was 23rd december 2017 um, reason for uh, revision to update new tag numbers for digital wall clock installed in manufacturing facility so similar to this you put the desired um, instructions now come back to the component of sop um, you will be sounding well in your telephonic or in person interview if you know that or you present yourself as that i understand that an sop contain a purpose a scope a responsibility definition procedures abbreviation reference and an exerts so purpose what is the purpose of this sop by the title of this sop it's very clear that the purpose of this sop is to give and detail instructions to an operator on how to calibrate use record readings a digital wall clock do and don'ts with a digital wall clock second the scope then you include what's the scope of the sop where it's limited where it's limitation up to what extent it goes and if we have some another sops that cover a detail or a broader scopes uh, in the manufacturing or the company overall will include that here responsibility who is responsible let's say if a quality assurance sop is there so i'll put quality assurance department is responsible for implementation of this sop approval and implementation and consistently reviewing the procedure and implementation of this procedure on shop floor however all other concerning department own the responsibility to implement or follow the procedure mentioned in this sop definition if you have some terms that need a definition you include all those terms here with their detailed definition so you just put a word i'm just writing and their complete definition here then uh, procedure so how to operate this wall clock you will write down the instructions in every single um, sentence or step by step manner that when you go to manufacturing shop floor you have to see whether the digital wall clock is calibrated if it's calibrated and the record is updated then you have to start using the wall clock it's a first procedure of the day when the bat battery should be removed or replaced uh, whether the calibration is accurate or not so all those smaller and bigger instructions comes here abbreviation sometime company use short terms include those here references like let's say digital wall clock are reference to an a bigger sop or a policy or a guidance please include those numbers here and exerts any logbook format you have that where you are indicating that you have to record the readings in that logbook format i will go over the format and all in detail manner in other videos but this is how an sop structure look like so if you go in an interview present yourself effectively 
and you will be doing good. Happy New Year.